Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me for another episode of The Gold Standard. I am Jennifer Goldman, and I want to explain to you a model that you see on your screen right now that I call the upside down volunteer funnel. I mention this a lot of times when I work with nonprofit clients, and I thought it might be helpful for the rest of you who may not have seen me in action when I do my workshops or my seminars. So this is what you see in front of you, what I see a lot of nonprofit organizations doing currently, which is, and I'm going to try to explain, I tried to Picture it here in a way that will visualize it better for you. But what I see are nonprofit leaders going out to the general public, which you see at the top of the funnel there, and screaming, we need board members. We have empty board seats. We're looking for new board members. Who wants to join our board? And what happens then is you wind up with disengaged board members, just members of the general public who have the best of intentions, but they don't really know much about your organization. They don't know about your mission. They don't know what you expect of them. And you can tell them until you're blue in the face, but until they're really there and experiencing it, they don't know. And what happens then is we wind up with a board filled with people who are what I call sitting on a board. They're not really serving your organization. They're sitting on the board. They're expecting to show up at meetings maybe once a month for an hour, make big decisions and go home um, because they don't really know what else to do. And a lot of my clients are um, nonprofit organizations that have working boards. So if that's you, you definitely need your board members to be more engaged than just someone who's willing to show up for an hour a month and make decisions. So what happens from there in this model is the board members aren't really sure what to do. Maybe expectations start to sink in uh, over time and they realize maybe I'm not really meant to be on the board. So they step back and they say, well, I'm just going to join a committee because I like this one type of work that this organization does. So I'll serve that committee instead of being on the board. And then after a while on a committee, they realize, I don't know, maybe this really isn't the commitment for me. So I'm going to step back. And instead of being on a committee, now I'm just going to volunteer for a specific project or type of event that you do. So once a year, when you do this thing again, give me a call, come back. And then they just sort of wash back out into the general public. And I see a lot of nonprofits struggling with this. They're looking for that volunteer pipeline that they need to help get things done. They're looking for better committee members who will show up and have committee meetings that are productive and projects that move forward. And they're also looking for a board filled with engaged board members, people who are willing to show up, help make decisions, help fill out those committees, help do those projects, help recruit new volunteers. So what I'm trying to explain to people and help people is with the advice that I have is don't worry about empty board seats. It's okay to not fill every board seat because what we want to do is create a very intentional volunteer pipeline that looks more like this. Let's see if I can advance these slides here. This is the right side up funnel. So I realize visually the funnel doesn't flip, but the order in which you are recruiting people does. And this will take longer. You will have empty board seats for a while. But what you're doing is you're filling up your volunteer pipeline and you're letting people rise to the top, almost like climbing the ladder in a corporate structure. So what we're doing now is we're going out to the general public. And instead of asking for board members, we're asking for just general volunteers. Here are the types of projects, events, and things that we do. Who in the community can help us? Anyone can be a volunteer. We will find something that you can do. And so these are people who just are working on little bits and pieces of what your organization does. And over time, you will see the ones that are making a real commitment. These are the people that are more connected to your organization, to your mission, to your growth. So what we'll do then is we will take a look around and the cream of the crop of our volunteers, we will ask them to serve on a committee. Would you be willing to step up, do a little bit more, help us form these committees to plan the projects and volunteer to uh, carry them out? So the committee members then should be people who were asked to join out of the general volunteer pool. And they're the committed volunteers that you have found who have proven they're willing and able to donate hours and skills for the good of the organization. Then from there, over time, you will wait to see who rises to the top of that tier. And those are the people that we invite. And notice, I always intentionally say invite. 
We're going to invite those people to join the board or actually apply for a board position. We want the best of the people who are connected to our organization to have the invitation to join the board. It should feel like a privilege. You should have to rise to that level and prove that you are understanding and connected to the mission of the organization and the work that it does. So at that point, while it may have taken you a while longer, you will start filling out your board seats with people who are engaged. They come already knowing all about your organization, the work it does, the mission you have, the expectations you put on your board members, your committee members, and your general volunteers. And generally, they will also be the people who know others like them who will rise to the top of each tier. And what you're doing now is you're creating the right volunteer pipeline of going from the general public into volunteerism, into committee members, onto the board. And also what you will find will happen is that you will create a pipeline of board members. You will then have more people waiting to be on your board, to serve the organization in that capacity, who know what they're doing, they're waiting. It's a privilege, they understand it, and it becomes a desired thing. Instead of going out to the general public and saying, we have empty board seats, we need new board members, those people, it doesn't feel like such a privilege because anybody can do it. It's not special then. If anybody in the general public can join your board, it's not really a special thing. So what we want to do is find a place for everybody in a volunteer channel and let them rise through the ranks uh, from general volunteer to committee to the board. And then I think you'll see you have the type of engagement that you're looking for. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them here in the YouTube channel, or if you go to the bio section, you'll find my contact information, feel free to reach out. If I can help you clarify anything here or with some other topic, I really would love to hear from you. Thanks so much.